Summary of Hard Times by Charles Dickens. The story opens with Mr. Thomas Gradgrind educating schoolchildren on the value of facts. He thinks that facts, not feelings or ideas, are the most important part of a good education. He teaches all the kids at the school and his own kids, Louisa and Tom, this way. When Sissy Jupe, one of his worst students, is left by her circus artist father, Mr. Gradgrind takes her in and teaches her along with his own kids using his holy system of facts. Since their hearts and minds have been completely ignored, Louisa and Tom grow up to be abnormal people, but not in the way you might think. They don't know how to love or be happy, and they can tell that something is very wrong with the way they live. Mr. Gradgrind asks Louisa to marry his older friend, Mr. Josiah Bounderby, who is a blustering maker in Coketown. Louisa does as he asks and marries Mr. Bounderby. She agrees to marry Bounderby not because she loves him, but because she thinks it will help her brother Tom, who is an apprentice to Mr. Bounderby. Tom is the only person she cares about, and since he knows this, he uses this to get her to marry him. Now, both Louisa and Tom live with Mr. Bounderby, and Sissy stays with Mr. and Mrs. Gradgrind and Jane, the youngest Gradgrind. Under his rule, Mr. Bounderby's plant workers, who are also called hands, do not have happy lives. Stephen Blackpool, who works in a factory, is tired every day from his job, but what bothers him more is that his wife has turned into a horrible drunk. He wants to get away from her and marry Rachel, a kind and sweet woman in the town, but he can't because he is already married. After he asks Bounderby for help, Mr. Bounderby tells him that he might be able to get out of the marriage if he had enough money to pay for a lawyer, but since he doesn't, the case is lost. As he leaves Mr. Bounderby's house with a heavy heart, he runs into an old woman who, for some reason, is very interested in hearing about Mr. Bounderby's successes. Tom is now a young man who drinks too much, doesn't work hard enough, has a lot of debt, and acts grumpy in front of everyone. When Mr. James Harthouse comes from London, his, Louisa's, and Mr. Bounderby's lives get a little more interesting. Mr. Harthouse is a handsome, rich young man who is so bored he has come to work for Mr. Bounderby in the hopes of doing something fun. He quickly becomes very interested in Louisa because he can see that her cold, emotionless face hides a strong fire. Harthouse tries to get her to like him by acting to be Tom's best friend. He does this because he has noticed that she only gets soft and emotional around Tom. Mrs. Sparsit is an old woman who used to live with Mr. Bounderby before he married Louisa. When he married Louisa, he kicked Mrs. Sparsit out without a word. She now watches with delight as he woos Louisa. The workers at Mr. Bounderby's plant decide to form a union because they are unhappy with their jobs and have been riled up by a shady union leader named Slackbridge. Stephen is at the noisy meeting where they decide to do this, and he tells them he can't join because he made a promise to someone else. Because of what he did, the whole town chooses to avoid him. Stephen is brought in to be questioned by Bounderby, but he is fired when he won't say anything about the union. Louisa and Tom go to see Stephen to give him some money before he leaves town to look for a new job. Before they leave, Tom tells Stephen in secret that he should spend the few nights before he leaves town at the bank, because there might be something good for Stephen there. Even though Stephen does this, nothing happens. Soon after that, the bank is robbed, and Stephen is the main suspect because of the strange things he did. By chance, Louisa is home alone one night while her husband is out of town. Harthouse finds her, tells her how much he loves her, and begs her to run away with him. Louisa tells him she'll meet him later that night somewhere. Mrs. Sparsit, who is hiding in the bushes near where they are standing, hears all of this and gets very angry. She follows Louisa when she leaves the house, but loses track of her. She runs quickly to Mr. Bounderby to tell him that his wife is almost married to Mr. Harthouse. In the meantime, Louisa has gone to her father's house and is completely out of ideas. She stands up to her father and tells him that all of her unhappiness in life, which has led her to this point, is because of how he taught her facts instead of how to feel, which took away all of her feelings, which are so important to living. Her father tries to catch her as she faints on the floor, but he is too shocked and sorry to do so. 
Sissy takes care of Louisa and gets Mr. Harthouse to leave Coketown for good, so Louisa slowly gets better at her father's house. Bounderby found out about the almost elopement from Mrs. Sparsit. He tells Mr. Gradgrind that if Louisa stays at her old home, he and she will no longer live together as husband and wife, so they split up. Stephen, on the other hand, has had bad luck. On his way to clear his name in Coketown, he falls into Old Hell Shaft, a huge hole in the ground. Sissy and Rachel find him there, and the men of the nearby town are able to get him out, but he dies soon after, holding Rachel's hand and looking up at the stars calmly. Before he dies, he asks Mr. Gradgrind to clear his name, since it was Tom who stole the money. Sissy saves the day again by telling Tom to hide with her father's old circus company. From there, Mr. Gradgrind and Louisa make plans for him to sneak out of the country. Bitzer, a former student of Mr. Gradgrind's who has been brainwashed by his education of facts, almost stops Tom from getting away. But thanks to the circus master's cleverness, Tom gets away from Bitzer and gets to another country. Back in Coketown, Mrs. Sparsett's mistake has shown that Mr. Bounderby is a fake. Everyone thought that Mr. Bounderby was a self-made man whose harsh parents had left him alone when he was young. Mrs. Sparsett brought his very good and kind mother into the public eye because she thought she was helping Stephen Blackpool rob the bank. Mr. Bounderby exiles Mrs. Sparsett from his home because he is now known as a liar. She has to spend the rest of her life with an old, sick, mean-spirited relative. Mr. Gradgrind learned his lesson the hard way, so he now focuses on faith, hope, and kindness instead of facts for the rest of his life. Louisa doesn't get married again, but she is happy to help Sissy take care of her own kids. Tom dies far from home, and on his deathbed, he feels bad about being mean to his family. About the Author Charles Dickens was born in 1812 and he spent his early years in Kent. When Charles Dickens was 10 years old, his family moved to London, and his father went to jail for not paying his bills. Dickens dropped out of school and worked in a shop that cleaned boots to help support his family. Later, he went back to school, but he dropped out when he was 15 to work as a law clerk, a court reporter, and a political writer before he decided to write full-time. Both in England and the US, his books were hugely famous. Some of them, like Hard Times, Great Expectations, Bleak House, and Oliver Twist, are still read today. Dickens also started a theater group and All the Year Round, a magazine. He was married to Catherine Hogarth, but they were not happy together. Together, they had ten children. Dickens died in 1870, and buried in the Poet's Corner of Westminster Abbey. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.